Welcome, friends, to another edition of TiffinCast. I'm your host, Seishu, and this is yet another interview called Inspire Interviews. Uh, it's in conjunction with the Inspire Photo Retreats that are going to take place in February 2015 in Portland, Maine. And I have with me today Spencer Lum, who is a photographer and a blogger based out of Brooklyn, New York. And I'd like to welcome Spencer. Spencer, thanks for joining us. Hey, Seishu. Glad to be here. Awesome. Hey, listen, I know you were at uh, Inspire last year, or rather this year, really, technically. Yes. Um, tell me a little bit about yourselves. Uh, you, you're a wedding photographer, and you're also a very avid blogger. Uh, and mention your blog as well, please. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the blog is www.ground-glass.com. Uh, Ground Glass, of course, that's the name. Yes. Um, and, and I mean, I, I am, as you said, both a wedding photographer and a blogger. And for me, I mean, those things come together as one and the same. Uh, people who have read my blog know that even though a lot of it is about business and strategy, right. at some level, it always ties back to my experiences as a photographer. And so what I'm doing is really, it's kind of the flip side of the coin. I'm taking everything I do with Five West and all my experiences, that includes a whole lot of struggles and a whole lot of big mistakes, and um, and sometimes occasionally maybe a tiny, tiny bit of an insight here or there, mm -hmm. and then um, and really kind of flipping it around and bringing it out to the photographer to the side of the photographers and what it means for a business owner, right. and and really that's what Ground Glass is about. Tell me a little bit about, about your motivation for starting Ground Glass. Why why? Why bother? I mean, most people would say, "Hey, just run your run your own business, run your own business blog." Mm -hmm. and why did you decide to start a a blog for photographers? What 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 motivated you to do that? That's a fantastic question. Um, I, I, I think the thing about the wedding industry is that, um, especially at the time I started, but I, but I think it's true even now, is that it tends to be that people go to one type of site for artistic inspiration sure. and they'll look at all their favorite photographers and they'll keep up on the pictures right. and um, and there are a lot of great pictures to look at Absolutely. and then people go to a different type of site to look for business tips things for maybe how to do your branding your sales or strategies for SEO and things like that but what I found is there really wasn't much that bridged the gap between those two it tended to be that business sites would be a lot about business and it was about the business of photography but not really that much about photography and of course photographer sites were all about photography and well great images more than anything because of course what people are looking at typically are blogs that show kind of uh, the most recent set that someone shot mm -hmm. but they wouldn't really be talking about a lot of what went into that photography and how it kind of fits into the whole brand picture and what it means for the business and so I saw this gap and it, it just kind of um, well, to be honest, it really bothered me uh, because I feel like in any good business, the two things, they have to go hand in hand. You have to have a product or service, and that has to tie in and drive the brand and the sales. And they shouldn't be these separate things, and yet here we have this environment where it tends to be that people talk about it in one framework, either as a business owner or another, as an artist, when in reality, you need kind of a pipeline that takes it all the way from one to the other. And and that was my motivation behind Ground Glass. So it seemed like a, it's like a natural progression from one to the next, yeah, for you? Yeah, yeah. And, and in some respects, it's funny, your blogging could also probably help your business in a way, too. Right? Oh, yeah, it, it actually helps me clarify a lot of things. I mean, right. a lot of times I'm writing, especially my rants, if I'm ranting, usually I'm just yelling at myself. I'm like, I can't believe I did this <laughs> stupid thing. What was I thinking? And then I write about it. Right, uh, right. Uh, uh, amongst... So many of the posts that you've had in the past year or two years, what has, what, what, is there a singular theme that sort of pops up out of all of them in your mind? You think like, okay, well, we've, I've, really, I've really talked quite a bit about branding. I've really talked a lot about you know, customer experience. What is it that, that really pops up for you? Probably voice. I mean, voice, um, the idea of kind of not being inhibited, kind of all the things psychologically that stop us from expressing who we are, both mm -hmm. photographically but also as business owners. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there's a lot of pressures on both sides right. to kind of conform and do things a certain way because we think we're supposed to. Um, but in reality, those things tend to work against you, especially uh, the longer you're in business, um, the more it works against you. And so uh, kind of whether you want to call that voice or brand or purpose or something uh, like that, 
it, I think kind of, if anything, it's really about this idea of trying to break through these, these barriers that we have inside of ourselves um, that stop us from getting where we want to go. Excellent. And let's jump over to the Inspire Photo Retreat site. I know this is going to be your second time presenting yeah. at Inspire in 2015. What exactly did you talk? I unfortunately didn't make it to your presentation in 2014. Uh, tell us a little bit about your presentation in, in this year and then what you're going to be talking about next year. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's similar topics, but this one's going to be a little bit more developed. Last year, I was talking about branding, um, kind of how, how to build a bulletproof brand, essentially, and kind of all the different components of the things you're going to look at. Um, that was massive. It, uh, I think I talked for, I don't know, six hours or something like that. It was, it was long. Um, I hear it was a packed audience, like packed, like it was fully packed. Is that well, true? Well, I... All I can say is that the fact that people managed to sit through it, I am so thankful that they did, that they would sit and listen to me that long. But yes, it was pretty full. Um, uh, but yeah, that, that was kind of my topic before. It was really kind of how to create a deep brand. And I, I'm going to be continuing on this, those lines this year. But some of the things I wanted to dig into that I didn't really last year were some of the assumptions and the psychology that I, talked, uh, that I just talked about right now about uh, that I address on Ground Glass. Mm -hmm. I think there are kind of these corrosive assumptions and behaviors and patterns that we have. And um, <clears throat> what you really want in a business is you want to create a product or service. And, and in wedding photography, I kind of think of it as both a product and a service. But you want to create something that gets ahead of the curve, that gets ahead of where the market is, um, that's kind of uh, that's in a space that you can own that other people aren't fighting for yet. And so I'm going to talk about the psychological process, about how these assumptions that we have, how they kind of they hold us back and stop us from getting to that space, mm -hmm. and the things we can do to actually get there. So it's going to continue on the lines of how to create a really deep brand, and how to create something that's really fleshed out, and to do it the way, well, I mean, I used to run, I used to run a brand agency and a design firm, and so kind of I... I'm going to talk about kind of the perspective of creating a really a really strong brand like you would if you're an agency and kind of all the considerations and it's it's much broader than most people really ever get a chance to um think about because when you're running a small business you've got a billion things in your head and you don't really have a chance to hire out uh, well you don't really have a budget if you're right. you know, one right. you can hire out a brand agency so I'm going to talk about kind of try to bring in some of the things that we would uh, that we would develop and work on and talk about there and then kind of merge that with a lot of my knowledge and experience just being a photographer and running a photography business and um, and kind of working on it from that angle also okay how much of your your presentation will be really geared towards just wedding photographers, or does it matter? In a sense, it really doesn't matter. Right. <clears throat> I mean, I read brand books all the time, and they'll talk about examples from Nike or McDonald's or whatever else. And the reality is um, they apply every bit as much to a small business as to a large business. I mean, not every single thing across the board, of course. But my point is that um, most of my examples, yes, they do tend to be wedding photography based because that's where the bulk of my experience sure. is. I mean, I have done children's photography. I've done other forms of, um, mm -hmm. of consumer-based photography, but the bulk of what I've done is definitely weddings. Okay. But the idea of creating a really great brand is, is um, very universal. And, and, and the fact that, uh, I mean, most of the translation I'm going to be doing is taking these big examples from big companies and uh, that you'll read about in the brand books and explaining how you can apply these things for a small business. And so, yeah. Give me an example. <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> I wasn't that. You put me on the spot. Um, yeah, I'm sure I can come up with something. Let's see. I mean, okay. Well, la last year I spoke a lot about purpose. And, um, okay. And so a lot of times people think that something like big words and something like purpose is so esoteric that, um, that it really doesn't apply when you're just working for yourself. Or, um, and, and, but the thing about purpose, in a large, at a large scale in a corporation, something like purpose is, is hugely important. Uh, having a sense of purpose, kind of knowing what your purpose is, is kind of, that's, that's the core of your brand. That's the thing that pulls everything together. And the reason it's so important, I mean, there are tons of reasons, not all of which I can get into here. Sure. But for example, one simple reason is that it binds 
everybody in the company together so that everyone is looking the same direction. Because it's pretty common, you can have some person at a cash register checking people out, and that person is going to have, have a totally different life than kind of the person who's working at the corporate headquarters right. in the marketing department. Right. And so having a common purpose in a, in, um, in a large company like that, of course, it's, it's a big unifier. It means everyone is working from a similar perspective and kind of doing a similar set of things with a similar mindset, even though their jobs and their positions are nothing alike. Now, a lot of times people would say, see that and they'd say, well, okay, that's fine. That's for a big company, but what difference does that, how does that affect me as a small business? And, I, you know, as an example, it, two examples are, I mean, the first is kind of purpose in general. If you don't have a highly developed purpose and a highly developed idea of what you're doing things for, it's incredibly hard to create a product and shoot in a specific way where you know kind of like this is my type of shot and this is not. And it's incredibly hard to know like who your audience is going to be and who you're trying to speak to if you don't know kind of the fundamental reasons you're doing everything you do and how it affects people. But not just that. Um, but the thing is, even as individual business owners, we wear like 50 hats all the time. And so when we walk into a sales meeting, it, it's really common, for example, I'll go into a sales meeting and I'll have my sales hat on and I will not be thinking of the world like I think of it as a photographer, not 100%. Mm. Uh, in fact, I find there's a lot of inconsistencies because all of a sudden maybe now I'm thinking I want to get the sale and I just want to say whatever it takes, and which is completely inconsistent with this idea of creating um, this really strong brand, <clears throat> which is what you'll be thinking about as a marketer or as a shooter saying I want to shoot in this way and this is my voice. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to, uh, like, the organizational strategies and the ideas of how you can, how to create a purpose and how to kind of lodge that into your head at all times, just like you would, to the, the fact that <clears throat> we have to do it with different hats on as opposed to a corporation having to do it with different people, it's actually not all that different because what happens with a corporation is they find ways to make sure that everyone understands the brand so deeply that no matter what they're doing, no, no matter what the situation they'll kind of they'll stay true to it we need to do the exact same thing we need to make sure that when we're doing a sales activity or a customer service activity when we pick up the phone that we always have that purpose that brand mm -hmm. right it's the first thing in our head and we're so that we're not for example a customer service representative talking what we are is kind of a representative of this brand of the voice of our own companies and so even though we're only one person and it seems like there wouldn't be that consistency problem when you have a one person company the reality is people do it all the time I just can't tell you how many people where I've seen their website and I've seen how they talk and I've seen the pictures they take and they look nothing alike it looks like they're three different people um, and so that's kind of uh, that's one example uh, one much longer example than I meant. <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's great that's terrific yeah I think I think uh, you know what you're almost saying uh, reminds me of uh, of Simon Sinek's you know finding your why or starting with mm -hmm. why and that 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 purpose as you said or mission statement uh, comes out of really defining our why uh, very clearly yeah yeah uh, and then going from there and then it, sort of imbuing everything we do with that why you know why mm -hmm. are we why are we selling it uh, a product in this way or why are we uh, you know even suggesting a specific product to our clients and, and you know because it sort of uh, bolsters our idea of why you know yeah. and makes makes our why that much stronger um, Spencer really we could keep going on and on but uh, I want people to come and see you. So, uh, <laughs> you know, so do I. <laughs> it's going to be a wonderful event. I'm, I'm looking forward to, I mean, I've had such a pleasure talking to so many uh, inspired speakers so far. And um, I'm, I'm slowly releasing all these videos out to everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Appreciate it. Oh, thanks so much. We'll see you Goodbye. in February then. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.